Hamza Shemaev ran through Robert Whitaker in the first round. How crazy is that statement? Robert Whitaker has never been finished in the first round out of any middleweight fight, and he's never been submitted in his entire MMA career. Hamza did both of those off of a hiatus as well. He hasn't fought in over a year. He came back as the calm, wise version of himself and just seemingly a better fighter than ever. I mean, he talked about his training camp being evolved and more professional. That was the word he constantly used. He's much more of a professional now when it comes to preparation for a fight. And he was so insanely strong. The grip he had around Robert Whitaker's face with the neck crank dislocated his jaw. There was no time for Whitaker to settle in on the neck crank. As soon as the squeeze got applied on his face, Whitaker tapped out. No one has ever done that to Robert Whitaker, one of the greatest middleweights of all time. One of the best anti-wrestlers and anti-grapplers we've ever seen in the middleweight division, which is still true. It is still true after that fight, but Hamza showed he's levels above that. There's not a single grappler that Whitaker has ever fought that was able to do that to him. And he fought against Olympic wrestlers and renowned Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu legends, and they couldn't do that to him. Some of the best wrestlers and grapplers in the sport, and they couldn't do that to him. And I see some people downplaying Robert Whitaker's defensive grappling skills. Like, oh, you know, he was supposed to be the best anti-grappler, but look what Hamza did to him. No, Whitaker is established. His defensive grappling skills are known. Like, he's shown it against some of the best grapplers in the sport. Downplaying Whitaker's skills is taking how good that win was away from Hamza. Do you know how crazy that is for Hamza to do that to someone like Robert Whitaker? A guy who's been tested on the ground against the best and did very well against them, and Hamza ran right through him like it was nothing? It doesn't mean that Whitaker is bad on the ground. It means that Hamza is one of the best grapplers in the sport. If not, he might even be the best grappler in the sport. Hamza is probably the best grappler we've ever seen in MMA. I don't think there's a single fighter that beats Hamza in the middleweight division. If there's anyone that could bring a fight to him at this point, it's probably Drikus, just because he has that awkward style, that Looney Tunes button mashing style that just happens to win fights. But his grappling, although very good, it's not on the level of Hamza's. I think he walks right through Sean Strickland, where Strickland has very good anti-wrestling too, a very good ability to get up from the bottom, but they've trained before. And Hamza said he submitted him many, many times in the training room. And we've seen Drikus take down Sean Strickland, who doesn't have the same kind of top control that Hamza Shemaev has. I've always thought that Hamza would take down and submit Israel Adesanya. Now, I think it would be even easier for him to win that fight. Kyle Brawlo will be an interesting matchup, but another fight I think Hamza wins. Like, I think he's going to be the next middleweight champion, and he might reign for a very long time. This was the fight to show how good Hamza really is, and he is that good. The best win of his entire career, supposed to be the hardest stylistic matchup in his entire career, and he made it look easy. We could talk about the Kamar Usman fight, right? He struggled in that fight, but he was sick going into it, as he said. He said he was sick during that fight, and I think Hamza is a better middleweight than he is a welterweight. He's at his optimal weight class. The guy's enormous, right? He's a very big guy. He looked bigger than Robert Whitaker. Whitaker's not a small middleweight, right? He walks around on 215 pounds. That was such an incredible performance from the very first takedown that he shot. The speed of his takedowns is unlike I've seen ever. A fighter of that size should not be able to shoot takedowns that quickly. And that first takedown was set up by a fake right uppercut that forced Whitaker to move back closer to the fence. And that's exactly where Hamza wanted Whitaker. Whitaker took a huge step backwards. Hamza shoots in on his legs, nearly gets him down with the first shot, but then uses that to chain wrestle, right? That's exactly what he wanted to do. That's where he's at his best chain wrestling. The first takedown is just a grab onto the opponent, and then from there, he's able to chain wrestle, get to Whitaker's back, and essentially just assert his dominance against Whitaker. Constantly trying to get the back, but Whitaker did a very good job with taking away the hooks so Hamza couldn't get the back take until later. This went on for a very long time, where Whitaker was up against the fence, Hamza with the body lock, constantly controlling the posture and getting one hook in, but needed more time to get both of his hooks in. And the reason for that is Whitaker was keeping one side of himself glued to the fence so Hamza couldn't squeeze in the other leg around to get the other hook in, right? You can see here Whitaker was able to draw back his right leg and bring it inward to take away that hook from Hamza. But then there was this position where Hamza does get both hooks in for a moment. They turn head first into the fence. Hamza rolls to get the other hook in. As Hamza's getting both hooks in, Whitaker grabs onto one of them and pulls that out. But he lets go of Hamza's foot and brings his hand up to Hamza's head, leaving the same side opened for Hamza to bring the hook in. But then look what Hamza does here. He takes out his right hook to bring it under Whitaker's leg, lifting his legs up so then he can rotate Whitaker to the right side. And as he posts on the ground, Whitaker spins into Hamza and gets out of the position. This is what we mean by Whitaker being one of the best anti-grapplers in the middleweight division because not a lot of fighters are successful like that against Hamza. If Hamza takes him down, they're usually on the ground for the entire round. 
Whitaker was able to scramble his way out of it, showing how good his defense is on the ground, but it's still not enough to beat Hamza. Hamza eventually gets him down again and submits him. Some people are arguing, oh, Whitaker was supposed to be one of the best grapplers. He was. He was. Look at a sequence like that. When are fighters able to do that against Hamza? Scramble their way back up to the feet in the first round against him. Just because Hamza steamrolled him after doesn't mean Whitaker is bad on the ground, which discredits his win. What it really means is, Hamza is that good that he beat one of the best anti-grapplers in the sport. So as Whitaker gets back up to his feet, Hamza shoots a double leg up against the fence too quickly for Whitaker to move out on an angle to get away from the fence. And he pulls out that leg, bringing Whitaker back to the ground. And they get into a similar position as last time where Hamza has that left hook in. Whitaker's trying to stay as close to the fence as possible on his right side. And Hamza's controlling Whitaker's posture. In the same sequence as last time where they turn headfirst into the fence, Whitaker's trying to roll his way out of it. Hamza grabs around the neck in the same scramble pulling Whitaker to the mat. This is different than last time, where before Hamza was trying to get the back take, this time he wants Whitaker's back on the ground and him on top in full mount, which he nearly gets, but Whitaker rolls again to give up his back so he can walk up to the fence and get into the same position again. And Hamza intelligently forearm frames on the back of Whitaker's head to push him down, Again, he's always controlling Whitaker's posture. And this time he wants to create some space between himself and Whitaker. So he pushes down on the head, opening up space for him to land ground and pound shots, raining down right hands to the side of the head. And what that does is it causes Whitaker to focus on defending his head from the ground and pound, rising his head into Hamza's chest so he doesn't get punched anymore, right? He's closing in that space so there's not as much distance for Hamza to generate as much power in his punches. But instead, Whitaker completely abandoned his defense on his left side, leaving an opening for Hamza to go for the neck crank. And at the same time, Hamza's bringing his left arm across Whitaker's jaw. He grabs onto Whitaker's right hand, brings it downward so his arm can go all the way through. Look how the point of his elbow is aligned with Whitaker's chin. This is a fully locked neck crank and Whitaker taps out right away. What an amazing performance by Hamza Shemaev. There is no more doubting him. I think he's the best middleweight in the world and one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world or at least he will eventually prove that he is one of the best pound for pound fighters. We don't see many grapplers on the level of Hamza Shemaev. I mean the way he steamrolls opponents in the first and second rounds like that is crazy. And as for his next fight, title shot. I think if Hamza fights Sean Strickland he would just take him down and submit him. I don't think there's much Strickland can do to him. He doesn't have the punching power to knock him out. He doesn't have the submissions on the ground. He has a good ability to get up from the bottom, probably even better than Whitaker does, but that's not enough to beat Hamza. I think Hamza shoots a takedown right in the beginning of the fight, knowing that Strickland doesn't really use footwork too much. He takes Strickland down and submits him. The only fight that's really interesting is with Drikas because Drikas just changes how fighting works. Whatever you think about fighting is true for every fighter except Drikas Duplessis. So maybe he can somehow find a way to make the fight competitive, if not even win, but I think Hamza beats him too. I don't know, maybe it could be recency bias in terms of my opinion of who he beats, but I view Robert Whitaker's grappling defense very, very highly. The only time he got taken down recently and held down was against Drikas, but I don't know, Drikas is just different. And uh, Whitaker said that he fell off in that fight, to be fair. If Drikas is ever the example of something working, I, I don't know how to look at that, because he can make anything work. He can hit you with his collarbone and knock you out somehow. He's throwing overhand face plant ankle pick combo that seems to work on Israel Adesanya. Like, if Drikas is the example of something working against a certain fighter, look at that as like an anomaly. And as for Drikas, Drikas is physically strong and he has good grappling, but he's been put in bad positions on the ground before against lesser grapplers and even put himself into bad positions, like pulling opponents on top of himself. And the way that he throws punches on the feet, like if he's swinging haymakers and overhands and blitzes at Hamza from range like that, the speed of Hamza's take takedown that you saw here against Whitaker and you've seen before against Li Jing Leong and Kevin Holland, the speed of those takedowns will make it so easy for Hamza to get Drakus to the ground under those blitzing combos and then I think he would eventually get his back and submit him as well. Wrestling and grappling in the state of MMA today is the most important. It's the most dominant. Every fighter needs to learn it at the highest level because you got guys like Hamza Shemaev shooting takedowns as fast as a featherweight. He's like as strong as a light heavyweight and one of the most skilled grapplers in the sport right now. It's insane. I don't think I've been as impressed with someone's grappling skills that I am with Hamza ever since like Habib. I think Habib is the last one where I was very impressed with how good that guy was on the ground. In the one sequence with Islam, that last takedown and submission that he got on Dustin Poirier, that was insane too. But just the overall skill set, Hamza is the best. He's the best at it. And as for Whitaker, you could do him versus Imovov or maybe Kyle Barallo. Just depends which fighters are going to fight Adesanya. I think Adesanya and Whitaker should fight either Imovov or Kyle Barallo. And I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, make sure to give the video a like, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video.